Good morning, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week at everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news of a surprising detail in the recent Aussie budget. But first in the US, import prices may be about to fuel a rise in inflation there. They were up 4.1% in the year to April, boosted by a rise in energy costs. And the American government had a $182 billion budget surplus in April. The fiscal 2017 year-to-date deficit was $344 billion, compared with $353 billion in the same period of fiscal 2016. As a percent of GDP, this deficit is now just on minus 3%. In China, consumer inflation remained tame in April, edging up on higher costs for rent, education and other non-food items, while producer prices rose at a slower but still high pace. The consumer price index was up just 1.2% from a year earlier, rising from 0.9% in March and slightly above the 1.1% forecast of analysts. And new data shows China's biggest ever foreign acquisition frenzy is ending almost as dramatically as it began. After stunning the world with a record $350 billion of announced outbound takeover deals in 2016, Chinese companies are now struggling to cope with tighter capital controls and increasingly wary counterparties. Cross-border purchases plunged by more than two-thirds during the first four months of this year, the biggest drop for a comparable period since the depths of the global financial crisis in 2009. After a brief starburst, Chinese buyers are now on the sidelines. In Australia, some further measures in the new federal budget are just now beginning to get some attention, especially the depth of the plans to tackle their black economy. One in particular deserves mention here, the new requirement for buyers of newly built homes and apartments to pay GST on their investment. Currently that is done by the developer, and a new home purchase is GST free, just like the purchase of an existing home. But some developers have gamed the system so intensely by going bankrupt right at the end of the project, the Aussie tax authorities find they never actually collect the GST. So the onus is to be put on the ultimate buyer. This is a case where innocent developers, the majority, are going to pay for the shark's actions. And this is likely to make existing houses seem more attractive to buyers, especially as the resale of a new built home won't recover the GST paid. Only the first buyer will pay it. In New York, US Treasury 10-year yield is up again this morning, is now 2.42%, and that is even after a heavy sag in between based on US political risk. The price of oil is up today, up $1.70. The US crude benchmark is now over 47.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under 50.50 a barrel. The mover is a surprise lower level of US crude oil inventories. And gold is also up, now at $1,220 an ounce. New Zealand dollar is slightly stronger as well, now at 69.40 US cents. On the cross rates, the Kiwi dollar is at 94.20 Aussie cents, and the first break above 94 since early February, and it's at 63.9 euro cents. The DWI is at 74.6. And don't forget, we'll have all the news and analysis around the RBNZ monetary policy statement today at 9 o'clock. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.